Hello and welcome back to Distributions, the video series where we talk a lot about generalized functions. And in today's part 13, we will generalize the so-called convolution. So we will first define it for ordinary functions and then we will see how we can describe it for distributions. However, as always, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or on Patreon. And please don't forget, with the link in the description, you find additional material for all the videos. Okay, then let's start with this operation we usually call the convolution and is denoted with a star. So first, let's write it down for integrable functions and let's call the first one here f. So it's a function from rn into r where the integral is finite. More precisely, the integral of the absolute value over the whole space is finite. And there you might know, for these functions we have a whole space and we call it L1. So usually we would just write f is in L1 of Rn. Moreover, you might also know instead of the curved L, we often have the normal one. And this one is a quotient space where we divide by the functions with integral 0. In this sense, f denotes a whole equivalence class. Okay, and now the point is that for such integrable functions, we can define the convolution. This is like a multiplication for two functions. And the rough idea for this you get when you look at the graphs of the functions. So let's say we have a function f here and another function g there. Then one could move the one graph over the other and look at the area here. Namely, one multiplies the function g with this moved f and integrates over the whole space. And this integration is done for every point in time of this moving. So I would say we put this into a formula now. So we take the function g of the point y and then we multiply with the function f. However, we actually want to mirror this function, so we put in minus y here. And since we want to move this graph of the function f, we actually put in x minus y. And now you already know, we want to do that for every point x in Rn. And then for a fixed x, we integrate this whole thing with respect to y. This means we have dy here. And now if this integral exists, we have a value for our new function. And this is what we call the convolution f with g. More precisely, we have it here at the point x. And now it turns out that this integral here on the right hand side exists almost everywhere for x in Rn. In other words, we can say that the convolution defines a new function on Rn. And indeed, this new defined function is integrable again. Moreover, if we use the notation L1 norm for this integral here, we get a very nice estimate. So we get an inequality for these L1 norms. So we can write L1 norm of f star g is less or equal than the L1 norm of f times the L1 norm of g. So we see the star operation acts like a multiplication in our L1 space. So this means in L1 we now have an addition and a multiplication. And together with these two operations, the space L1 becomes an algebra over the field of the real numbers. So for example, this implies that we have a distributive rule for calculations. However, I don't want to go into the details here, this is a nice property, but actually we want to extend the convolution for distributions now. Therefore, now the question is, how can we extend this definition here? And as always, first we should look at a locally integrable function. In other words, we first give a useful definition for a regular distribution. So let's fix f as a locally integrable function. And usually we write it like that, L1 with log in the index. And in addition, 
we also take two test functions phi and psi. And of course, they are also integrable, so we don't have any problems with the convolution there. Okay, then let's write it down. I want to have a convolution with the test function psi and the function f. So we have psi star f. And then I want to put this into the integral with the test function phi. So I denote the brackets here to denote an inner product, which is just the integral. And inside the integral, we just have the multiplication of both functions. So not complicated at all, but you already know, we need that to generalize it to distributions. Indeed, you should recognize inside this integral, we have another integral given by the convolution. So let's see how this looks. So the first thing we have here is the function psi with variable x minus y and then times f of y. So you see, this is just the definition of the convolution, and in this case, it should also exist. Obviously, the compact support of psi tells us that this integral always exists. Okay, and then we just multiply to the right phi of x. And also there, we have a compact support, so we can definitely apply Fobini's theorem here. This means we can simply change the order of the two integrations here. Hence, we can put the integration with respect to y to the outside. In other words, we first do the integration with respect to x. So this is all what we do here. We just change the order of the two integrations. However, now we see that inside this first integral, we have f of y that does not depend on x. In other words, we can just pull it out as a constant there. And if we pull it in the front, we immediately see what we have here. Namely, we see a convolution with two test functions here. The only thing we have to change here is the order of the two variables x and y. So what we actually want now is y minus x because we integrate with respect to x. So we just define a new function to get that and we call it psi with a rotated head. In other words, this rotated head here just means that we add a minus sign for the input. So if we use z as a variable, this value here is psi of minus z. And usually I will call this function here psi check. So you see, this check operator is not complicated at all. And now it allows us to write down a second convolution here. The only thing that changed from before is that the input variable is now y. So indeed, if we want, we can rewrite this one integral as an inner product again, which means it's simply f together with this convolution. So you could say from left to right here, psi and the convolution shifted to the right. And now this implies that we have a result for regular distributions. So we just take the regular distribution associated to the function f. And as always, instead of the inner product, we just take the dual pairing. So this means we put in a distribution here on the left hand side and a test function on the right hand side. And now the formula from above tells us that this is the same as tf applied to psi check star phi. And since we have this for regular distributions, we can also write it down for all distributions. But at this point, as always, it becomes a definition. Therefore, let's fix a general distribution t from d prime and a test function psi. And for these two inputs, we can define a new distribution. Namely, we just say that psi star t defines a distribution. And we do that by using the formula from above. This means we have to apply the distribution t to this new test function given by this convolution. In fact, it's not hard to prove that psi check star phi is a test function again. Hence, this is the important definition that generalizes the convolution to distributions. However, please note, the input of the convolution is now a little bit different because only the second factor is a distribution. But what we get is a distribution again. And now it's not hard to see, 
that this defines a bilinear map. Therefore, in some sense, we can also see the star operation here as a multiplication operation. But now in contrast to the L1 case before, we have an identity element in this multiplication. More concretely, the delta distribution acts like a 1 in this multiplication. This is indeed very interesting and helpful and something we will discuss in the next videos. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.